she's aware that she had seen it. The fourth season of Netflix The Crown introduces a myriad of new characters, but perhaps one of the most culturally notable figures of the 1980s also makes her entrance into Buckingham Palace this season, Diana Spencer, Princess of Wales. The season follows Diana's courtship, marriage, and relationship breakdown with Prince Charles, ending on an ominous note before any formal separation between the pair. What followed in real life was the devastating end to Diana's life in 1997, a tragedy which shocked Britain and the rest of the world. Diana was born the Honorable Diana Frances Spencer on July 1, 1961, at Park House near Sandringham, Norfolk. When her father, then Viscount Althorpe, inherited the earldom, she became Lady Diana Frances Spencer. Her family was acquainted with the royal family for many years, her father working for both King George VI and then Queen Elizabeth, and the two families neighbored one another at Sandringham until 1978. Growing up, Diana attended boarding school in Switzerland, showing a particular talent and interest in music, piano, dancing, and home economics. She was just 16 years old when she first met Prince Charles, the heir to the royal throne, on a weekend in Althorpe. Charles had come as a guest of one of Diana's sisters, whom he dated on and off. Two years later, Diana was living in a flat in London, where she worked as a nanny and kindergarten teacher. Her friendship and eventual relationship with the prince began after being invited to Charles's 30th birthday celebration. It wasn't long before cracks in the relationship started to form. In an interview held after their engagement was announced in February 1981, a reporter asked the couple if they were in love. Charles gave a baffling response. Whatever love means. And I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> Diana revealed later that she had been traumatized by this moment. The young woman was quickly thrust into the limelight and fame of the royal family, moved out of her flat, and moved into Buckingham Palace shortly after her engagement. Here, she became incredibly lonely, according to a royal biographer, Ingrid Seward. Most days, she swam, worked on plans for the wedding, and took dance and exercise classes. Aside from this, she reportedly sat around, bored, and alone. Regardless, the wedding took place at St. Paul's Cathedral on July 29, 1981, just three weeks after Diana's 20th birthday. The ceremony drew an estimated global television and radio audience of around one billion, while hundreds of thousands of others lined the streets from Buckingham Palace to the cathedral that day. The archbishop who presided over the ceremony dubbed the wedding the stuff of which fairy tales are made. What awaited Diana, however, was regrettably nowhere near fairy tale fodder. Later, Diana would recall that she and the prince had met all of 13 times before getting married. It was shortly after moving into the palace that Diana began struggling with an eating disorder. In a 1995 interview with the BBC, Diana disclosed that her bulimia stemmed from a period of exceedingly low self-esteem and finding herself of little value or worth. She also pointed to an instance wherein Prince Charles placed his hand around her waist and commented, a bit chubby here, aren't we? The royal family was generally unsupportive of the princess's struggle. In one of Diana's conversations with the queen, she implied that Charles and Diana's relationship was struggling because of Charles being unable to cope with her eating disorder. Diana also became severely depressed and later revealed that she attempted to kill herself. On top of everything, Diana was coping with the additional emotional turmoil of Charles' long-standing affair with Camilla Parker Bowles. Charles and Camilla had dated for six months after meeting in 1971, but Charles was discouraged from marrying her by his family. Their affair, however, resumed sometime around 1989. At this point, Diana had given birth to both her children, Prince William and Prince Harry, and was well aware of the relationship between her husband and Camilla. In her BBC interview, Diana famously acknowledged the affair by saying, well, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Diana and Charles would separate in 1992, their divorce following in August 1996. 
Despite facing enormous challenges in her life as a royal, Diana flourished in the public eye, becoming an undeniable star of the royal family and winning over the hearts of millions. The princess used her popularity to raise awareness for many causes, such as leprosy, domestic violence, landmines in Angola, and mental health. She made headlines in 1987 for shaking hands with a patient undergoing treatment for AIDS, with the desire to help dispel the myth that HIV AIDS could be spread through touch. Her popularity was not without its challenges, however, and Diana was severely harassed by the invasive paparazzi, becoming at one point the most photographed woman in the world. According to Prime Minister Tony Blair's former advisor, people felt a kinship to the princess, which led to a deeply emotional reaction from the whole country following her unexpected death. In August 1997, a year after her divorce from Charles, Diana went on holiday with her partner, Ahmad Dodi Fayed. The two vacationed on the French Riviera for 10 days, then traveled to Paris, where they would meet their disastrous fate. On Saturday, August 30th, Diana and Dodi dined at the private salon in the Ritz Hotel, leaving a few minutes after midnight, presumably to travel to a private estate owned by the Fayettes. A Mercedes-Benz awaited the pair, and they were accompanied by Diana's bodyguard. Accounts of that night state the car reached around 70 miles per hour before approaching the entrance of the Ponte de Ma Tunnel, where the posted speed limit was only 30 miles per hour. The driver, Henry Paul, lost control of the vehicle, colliding with a pillar in the center of the highway. Dodi and Paul were pronounced dead at the scene, while Diana was rushed to the P.T. Salpetriere Hospital, still alive. She had suffered a concussion, a broken arm and cut thigh, as well as massive chest injuries. Doctors operated for two hours, but failed to get the princess's heart to beat properly again. Diana never regained consciousness and passed away from internal bleeding in the early hours of August 31, 1997. In 2019, Britain's top forensic pathologist, Dr. Richard Shepard, revealed that the death was caused by an extremely small and badly placed tear in a vein of Diana's lung, an injury so rare that Dr. Shepard claimed to never have seen another case of this throughout his career. It was also revealed that should she and Dodie have been wearing seatbelts, the possibility of them surviving the crash could have been much more likely. Diana's bodyguard, the only passenger in the car who was restrained by a seatbelt, was also the only one to survive the crash. On the Monday following the crash, French authorities revealed that driver Henry Paul, who had also been acting head of security at the Ritz Hotel, had a blood alcohol content three times higher than the legal limit. Additionally, many eyewitnesses stated that the Mercedes had been followed closely by paparazzi on motorcycles and in other cars, pursuing the possibility of photographing Diana and Dodi together. According to one motorcycle driver following Diana that night, many paparazzi at the scene did not help the victims after the accident, instead taking photographs of the crash. According to the New York Times, nine of the photographers present at the scene were charged with manslaughter, but were not found guilty. It took Queen Elizabeth five days before publicly acknowledging Diana's death. Diana's funeral took place on September 2, 1997. 2.5 billion viewers tuned in to watch the procession greatly exceeding the number of those who watched her royal wedding 16 years earlier. This morning's newspapers with their blanket coverage of Princess There are numerous conspiracy theories surrounding the accident, most sharing the fundamental belief that someone wanted to kill Diana intentionally. Some conspiracy theorists believe that Diana had been pregnant at the time of her death and that the British monarchy deemed the possible pregnancy unsavory. Other conspiracies include theories that the paparazzi killed Diana purposefully, that her medical care was sabotaged intentionally, or that Henry Paul, Diana's driver, was paid off to crash the Mercedes deliberately. But why do some people believe Diana was killed intentionally? Many point to the fact that in a note written by Diana some time before the accident, she stated, I am sitting here at my desk today in October, 
longing for someone to hug me and encourage me to keep strong and hold my head high. This particular phase in my life is the most dangerous. My husband is planning an accident in my car, brake failure and serious head injury in order to make the path clear for Charles to marry. Many of the conspiracies were so convincing and widespread that the British Metropolitan Police were forced to launch Operation Paget, an inquiry to determine whether any theories could have been true. The operation lasted years and cost millions of pounds, examining 175 theories in total, ultimately finding that each was without any foundation or basis in reality, and in concluding the death was, after all, merely a tragic accident. This is the one about which we can all be sure. Regardless of whether Diana's death was indeed accidental or something more sinister, it is indisputable that hers was a loss so unexpected and heartbreaking that it remains one of the most infamous events of the 20th century. Diana Spencer was truly the people's princess, as she would come to be known in the years following her death. She was a humanitarian and activist, striving to live in alignment with her truth. Diana once famously stated that she wished to be a queen of people's hearts, leading from the heart and not the head. By playing by her own rules and going against the flow of royal tradition, it is undeniable that Princess Diana left an unparalleled legacy and remains a queen of many hearts across the globe.